Understanding how the compiler uses memory is important in C. Where our data lies affects what we can do with it. This is the standard diagram for memory allocation in C. Your program operates in a contiguous section of memory, which is just storage locations that are addressed from some low address to some high address. The two segments that we've been talking about up to now are the stack and the heap. They are the bulk of the memory, and they start at the edges of this area and grow toward each other. C does that, so your program can have either a big stack or lots of dynamically allocated memory. Now that picture says that the stack grows down. The base is at the high end of memory, and the stack pointer is getting smaller as we add more stack frames. But when we've dumped memory, it looks like this. The top of the stack is at the top, which makes sense because that's what we call it even though the diagram says that the bottom of the stack should be at the top of memory. We can see what's going on if we look at the addresses. The addresses here are getting bigger as we go down the stack. So while it feels like the top of the stack is at the top, it's actually the smallest address that is in use on the stack. Before we can understand the rest of that diagram, we need to understand what global data is. Global data is data that's visible outside of the execution of any particular function. If you declare a variable outside of any function, it is global data, and it can be used inside any function. For now, let's not worry about accessing it from other C files, but you can. In this example, I declared global outside either of my functions. Main gave it a value of 64 and then called foo. Foo printed that 64 and then set it to 16, and when we get back to main, main sees that 16. It's global because everyone can see it and everyone can change it. Now we've spent a lot of time talking about how to pass information into functions. Why don't we just make everything global? Well, while there are times when you have to do this, it really isn't a good idea. The problem with global data is that it's global. Every piece of code can mess it up. Good design means that we follow the principle of information hiding. We should restrict the access of all information to only let the parts of the system that need it touch it. Global variables do not do that. Global variables are like putting your safe deposit box on Main Street with no lock on it. Very risky. So we'll minimize the use of global data as much as possible. Now we can get back to where the compiler is storing things. Usually, right below the heap is a segment that is named uninitialized data, which is also called BSS. That's a historical reference to an assembly operator named block started by symbol. All of that silliness aside, this is where global data that you haven't initialized will be stored. For example, if we modified our global example to not give global a value at its declaration, it would be stored in the uninitialized data segment. The nice thing about this is that the compiler zeroes this entire area, so global variables that you don't give a value to will start with a value of zero. So when I run this, the first print statement will output zero. The next segment is initialized data which means that the programmer gave it a value. There are actually two parts to this segment, one that is writable and one that is read-only. The writable section contains global variables that have initialized values. So the global variable in this example would be in the initialized data segment because we gave it an initial value. They put it in this segment because they don't need the zeroing that the compiler does for the uninitialized data segment. The read-only section of initialized data contains string literals, the stuff we put in quotes. In this example, the my string data would be in the read-only section of the initialized data segment. That means that we can't edit it. If you tried to change a value, it would give you a segmentation fault. Ooh, great time for an aside. Do you know why segmentation faults are called that? Each of these areas of memory is called a segment. Yes, I've been using that word throughout this video. A segmentation fault means that you're trying to access a segment in a way that you aren't allowed to. So when you try to write 
to the read-only part of initialized data, you're breaking the rules of that segment, so you get a segmentation fault. If you want to be able to edit that string, you need to make a copy of it in a local variable like this. But there's one other weirdness of this. If you declare C to be a char array instead of a char pointer, the compiler will give you space in your stack frame and copy my string into it for you. Then you can edit it. So many little details. The last section is called text, and this is where your program is stored. It is read only and put far away from the stack in the heap to make sure that buffer overflow problems don't corrupt your code. Bottom line, you need to know where your data is. That lets you know things like, did the compiler initialize it to zero? And can you write to it?